in bright and breezy Somerset to meet one of the UK's fastest rising comedians. It is James Acaster. James Acaster. <laughs> Thanks very much uh, for joining fun. us Thanks today. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So, you started out in a band. When was mm. it that you decided to move to comedy? Uh, Basically, it was when the band stopped. As soon as it stopped, I was uh, bored. I didn't really have anything else to do. Right. And I was feeling really sulky that I wasn't in a band anymore. So is it true that you once had a, a gig where someone left behind a bucket of sick? Well, it was the Edinburgh Festival. Right. It was Edinburgh Fringe, and uh, it was me, Nick Helm, and Josh Widdicombe. Mm -hmm. We were doing a free hander in a, in a little room in, right in the outskirts of Edinburgh. No one really came all month, like <laughs> six people a day if we were lucky. And we found it in the end. It, was, it had, like... Someone had put uh, a newspaper on top of the bucket, so we just took the newspaper off and then we were greeted with this <laughs> disgusting sight. I'm not exaggerating, like a cup of tea and a bowl of minestrone. Not one after the other, alternating mouthfuls back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> with the gigs like that, where you mentioned for the whole run, like six people mm. coming along, how do you kind of keep yourself motivated? If you approach every gig as like, I'm going to smash it, I'm going to be you know, this is my big break, then you will get depressed pretty quickly in comedy. But like, if you see it as, okay, today my only aim is that I perform this new routine mm. and see how it goes or whatever, you know, whatever your aim is for the gig, then if there's six people there, it doesn't matter because you get to go out, do that routine in an environment where, you know, you can try anything out. Is there any points where it gets quite competitive? There's like friendly competition when Edinburgh Festival's coming up and, you know, you just don't want to have a bad fringe, you want to be as good as everyone else. That's, you know, just healthy competition where mm. everyone is encouraging each other to get better and to push themselves. I happen to know a certain celebrity, like a month and a half ago, got himself kicked out of a karaoke bar. Now, look at your faces. Look at your faces. You know what your faces are saying? Who did that? Mm. Coming out. Yes. Yeah. So, could you tell us uh, a favourite part of your book? It's called Classic Scrapes, and it's based on it's all just true stories. It's one about the time I joined a, well, I very briefly joined a band uh, where the lineup was me on congas, this guy in didgeridoo, and a flautist as well. And uh, it was a fair, it's the most short-lived band I've ever been in. Right. Uh, and within one practice, the band split up very dramatically. Uh, and it was very tense and it was just a huge argument that I was not a part of, but like... Uh, and we also like nearly, we nearly got a record deal in that practice and <laughs> split up. Wow. So we had the whole like, you know, whole lifespan of a band all within like an hour. What's next? What's happening for you? Uh, I'm currently touring three different shows at the mm -hmm. moment, which has turned into four different shows, and we're filming those shows in September, and oh. uh, we'll be releasing them next year. Perfect. Um, so that's like the big project at the moment. Ladies and gentlemen, what a lovely, lovely audience you've been. Thank you very much for coming. See you another time. Peace!